Alright, what's up YouTube, HPJ here, and I'm coming at you guys with an update to my Sky Striker deck. So this is my current Sky Striker deck for, uh, for April. It changes really just depend on how the game itself is going. Um, I personally feel I think the most change out of it was my extra deck. And the main deck for itself just had a little bit of tweaks here and there. So, without further ado, let's get to it. So, my lineup starts off with three copies of Sky Striker Ace Ray, three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Strings, two copies of DD Crow, and two copies of Effect Failure. For my spells, I'm running three copies of Sky Striker Ace, I mean, Sky Striker, uh, Sky Striker Mech Widow Anchor, three copies of Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, two copies of Hercules Base. Two copies of Area Zero. And then for the one of Sky Striker spells, I'm running one copy of Jamming Wave, one copy of Afterburner, one copy of Shark Cannon, one copy of Horner Jones, and one copy of uh, Multi Roll. For the rest of the spells, I'm running two, three copies of for, uh, Foolish Burial of Goods, two copies of Twin Twister, one copy of Regeki, Dark Hole, um, Monster Reborn, Foolish Burial. Uh, one copy of Upside Goblin and a copy of Reinforcer of the Army and a copy of uh, Metal Foes Fusion. And the only trap card in the deck is Infinity Impermafits. Or Impermafits. I, I get this card's name wrong all the time, but I, I have three copies of Infinity. Alright, next up uh, for the extra deck, I'm running three copies of Suzuki. Uh, mobile ah Sky Striker Ace Suzuki, three copies of Sky Striker Ace Kigiri, two copies of Kina, two copies of Hayate, one copy of uh, Cerberus, one copy of Phoenix, one copy of Unicorn, one copy of Barrel Sword Dragon, and one copy of Tapologic Bomber Dragon. So the change in the deck pretty much comes within uh, dealing with a lot of the cards in the current game. If you are playing the second trying to do a lot of things dd crow was an add-in because crow hits graveyard cards you want to get rid of as many cards you have to deal with especially when you're playing against Salamangre, mangrate when you're playing against ultra guys there are things you don't want them to get back so with the power of dd crow crow can help you get rid of those cards i was considering bumping it up to three crow and maybe dropping um my one of my foolish burial goods and I was also thinking of amplifying the other uh, hand trap and that being effect veiler. But for the most part, Crow does its job well. Get rid of monsters that you don't want in the graveyard are trying to, to do stuff with themselves in the graveyard. And especially when you want to get spiny, you don't want to deal with a lot of the Ultra Geist monsters that can social summon themselves or social summon copies of other cards. Um, cards that are being targeted through a special summon. You want Crow to get rid of. Uh, Effect Veiler. Now, I know this is maybe an odd choice of Extra Deck Monster, but Veiler is tending to see a lot more play because, unfortunately, Ghost Ogre just is not cutting it. She may destroy the card, but she does not negate it. And if you want something negated, that's what Effect Veiler does. Effect Veiler is a little more situational considering the fact that I am running 3 Infinity, but I did want to at least try to work in Veiler. Veiler didn't do too bad um, as a whole. And I think she honestly does have a lot more utility now than she had before. Um, this is weird with these hand traps. You don't know which ones are going to do you well. So you just side them all in and then hope for the best. Uh, so you get a hand traps. Let's talk about the most beautiful of them all. Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs. Who still is making one of her biggest... Um, points in this game, you know, dealing with cards that search, dealing with cards that search from the deck, dealing with cards that add cards from the deck, you, you pretty much have your no to a lot of things in the game right now in the form of Ash Blossom and Joyous Springs. Uh, easy card to get a hand to now because of the fact that it is reprinted as a common, so if you're picking these up physically, it's not too hard a thing to get to. Uh, let's talk about Sky Striker Ace Ray. This is the main and key card to this deck. Getting into a lot of your other Sky Striker Ace cards, getting a lot of the things uh, set up for the graveyard, all revolves around Ray and what Ray and any copy of Ace of an Sky Striker Ace can do. Especially when you go into your link plays, when you go into your um, your bigger link plays, it's all thanks to this lovely lady right here. Now let's go on to the spells. Draw and search power comes from Engage. 
um, which will not be seeing any, unless this was like a hybrid deck, there's no need to not run multiples of this. Uh, then you have Widow Anchor, which is another effect Veiler, but also a, a Snatch Steal uh, for the turn. So you can negate your opponent's monster effects and it's still their monster, so they can't do anything with it. Uh, then we have, I'm still running two Hercules Ace because I like the recovery of this, and if I am specking into my opponent's monsters as the equipped spell that it is, um, I can attain, uh, I can draw cards off of it. And not too bad of a card when it's destroyed because it's a part of Avarice. So it's n two things in one. Uh, next up is we're going to talk about Hornet Drone. Hornet Drone is still broken. Uh, Hornet Drone just helps Sky Striker Aces to get into. Uh, a lot of the extra deck monsters because it's a token, it's treated as a Sky Striker Ace monster, it fits all the criteria, and literally this card was legit broken when it was at multiples because of all the things that this card could do in combination with a lot of the extra deck. I go over to Shark Cannon, it's another DD Crow, um, but you get the chance to touch some of the monster. Uh, I, I think I used this like a few times during testing it wasn't too bad of a thing it is a really good option now uh because you are dealing with decks like salaman great that have graveyard effects and if you don't want those monsters to get such a summon like like the biggest example is spiny then you can take spiny with shark cannon and then or banish shark uh spiny with shark cannon and that way you don't have to deal with it until the multiples of it are in the graveyard then um I'm running one Afterburner and one Jamming Wave because back row isn't much of an issue unless it's face up. Uh, but you can destroy your own stuff with uh, Jamming Wave and if in uh, Afterburner. And then you can get their additional effects and stuff off as well. Because multiple cells are going to be hitting the graveyard. Uh, Foolish Burial of Goods is a key way to thin out the deck. Its main target, of course, is the Metal Post Fusion. But for the most part, with the effects of Kigiri, you can send any of your Sky Striker cards to the grave. Sing, uh, link summon for her and she can retrieve it back. So you can have a set of flips there. Uh, I did forget about the field spell. I didn't mean to. Um, oh, and I forgot about multi-roll. Wow, I'm forgetting a lot of cards right now. Um, so the Sky Striker field spell, uh, main reason, it, it clears out your back row. Cause in, or it clears out your, your front and your back row. In case you do need one of those areas. Uh, its main purpose, of course, is to excavate so you can add a Sky Striker card from your deck to your hand, and then whatever target it has selected gets blown up. It does help in that sense to blow up cards like Hercules Base, because you can get its additional effect off. Uh, multi roll is similar to it in a sense. Whatever you blow up, spells uh, for the rest of the turn cannot be negated. So that's a really good beneficial thing there. And during the end you can send all these Sky Striker cards to the field. So that way you can use their effects again during the next turn. But unfortunately they'll get banished. And I rarely use that ability to get a lot of things back. I rather just protect my spell cards from being from being uh, negated. So that way I can proceed on with the rest of the turn. So now I can get on to the rest of the cards. And Foolish Burial of Good sends cards to the graveyard. So I can uh, have them either for Kigiri's effect to revive them. Or I can send Metal Force Fusion so now I can have another name and a, uh, another spell in the graveyard and that's pretty much two right off the bat. Then we have Reinforcement Army to help me search for Sky Striker Ace Ray. Regeki, Dark Hole for monster removal. The Twin Twisters are to help with back row. Uh, chaining this to a lot of things to uh, not have to deal with so many nasty threats. I think one of the is biggest issues that Sky Strikers has to deal with is Ultra Geist because of Secret Village of Spellcasters. I don't know exactly how the next series of monsters are going to work out because we do know the stuff. This ah, the structure deck is going to come out really, really soon for um, Endymion, and Endymion can be a problem because they're all spellcaster and they can abuse Secret Village of the Spellcasters. So it's another deck. Oh, excuse me, that you don't want to deal with in terms of using Secret Village. So any outside you have to Secret Village, take advantage of. And Twin Twister is a perfect setup card for you. You can discard a lot of cards to the graveyard. You can pick them back up with Kigiri. Um, you can send Ray to the graveyard and have her ready for a rebuttal. And you really just deal with whether back row you have to deal with. So you don't have to deal with it later on. Uh, I'm going to move on to, I think, pretty much just Outside Goblin's additional draw. Uh, Foolish Burial helps 
sending cards to the graveyard as well. The Metaphor Fusion is just in as bad as what card as most people think it is. Metaphor Fusion's main gimmick is that because it's in the graveyard, it counts as another spell. You can send it back to your deck and then draw a card off of it being sent back to the deck. So that way you can mitigate what's going on without having to deal with so many issues. Um, in terms of that, it is a metal, it is a fusion card, yes, but the real purpose of this is because of how useful it can be as a card in the graveyard. A spell card that has the ability to send itself back to the deck and then give you an additional draw card. You play Foolish Burial of Good, so you can send it if that is the issue. If you draw into it, you have cards like Multi Roll, and you have cards like Area Zero, in which you can blow it up and have it go back to the graveyard to where you can set it up again. Uh, I think I pretty much talked about every card in the, in the deck. The other card now talked about is Infinity. Infinity is just a deck veiler, but with more promise. Whatever cards are in the zone that this card was activated in, can I activate their effects until the end of the turn? And they're negated, so uh, this helps with a lot of things. Especially when we're dealing with a format where a lot of cards can end up on the, grave, on the field or in the graveyard. And then just dealing with a lot of monster effects. That can really be, excuse me, can really be a problematic situation. And not to mention, this is a hand trap, so you can easily just play this card from your hand without having to deal with so much stuff as well. Kind of like Red Reboot in that same sense. As we move on to the extra deck, I'm running three copies of Suzuku. Is it Suzuku? Yeah, she's Shizuku. Uh, she's the one that pretty much gets a spell a tracker or a spell from your grave from your deck and add it to your hand um you pretty much want to run three of her you want to win three kigiri kigiri and her are pretty much a combo setup um kigiri can get any card under, any skycracker spell from the graveyard and add it to your hand she'll gain 100 attack for each skycracker spell in the graveyard why suzuku decreases all your opponent's monsters attack and defense by 100 for each spell and trap in the graveyard there's a contradiction to each other and then you have uh, Kina. Kina is a life point gain type of, situ of situation. Um, a lot of people like Kina because Kina can help you out with the grind game. And that every time a spell you act, a second spell you activate, um, you'll gain a thousand points when you activate effects resolve. So you have a lot of promise with that, especially when it comes to dealing with a lot of the nasty burn decks and burn situations in time, of course. Then we have um, Hayate. Hayate into Kigiri into Suzuku. That is, is pretty much what that combination is. She's a She pretty much will send any side check herself to grave. You'll pick it up with Kigiri. She can attack directly. It's a lot of good promise with her. A lot of people are running the two of her and Kina, honestly, because it they aren't really that specifically needed. But they are there for those additional names. So that's not too bad of a thing to have. But it is, it, their effects aren't too necessarily beneficial when you um, can use them all the way around. Uh, I put in the Nightmare Engine, uh, Cerberus to take out monsters, Phoenix to take out back row, and then Unicorn to bounce anything that gets in the way. Barrel Sword Dragon is an optimal monster just to have um, some kind of, to not only have a beat stick, have an easy to get to monster, you have a ton of setup with this guy, and it is all around a great link monster. And type of logic bomber dragon. Let's talk about this guy. Um, forcing your when you pretty much when your opponent summons a monster, it'll destroy any monster uh, on the field. Then in addition to that, this is three K attacker. And whatever it takes down, your opponent will take down equal to that monster's original attack. So even if the monster in defense, if it has some decent attack to it, it's going to take damage from it. And just like Barrel Floor Dragon, a lot of these monsters are getting easier and easier to summon because of a lot of the setup and gimmick, setup and mechanics to this game. You can easily get into this guy with like two or three cards with ease. Um, I was considering putting back some resources um, as an add-on, maybe just because it's a lot easier to get to her. But then I also thought about it, it's easy to get into Phoenix and Cerberus as well, so... There are still a lot of promises into getting into your Tapologic Bomber Dragon or into your Riddle Sword. And having your Sky Checker Ace deck take a lot of things out of its way by storm. So, that is um, pretty much for the most of it. There are just a lot of one of cards, of course, as you can see, like extra um, Afterburners, Jamming Waves, 
area zeros. And then, of course, the um, extra hand traps of Snow Rabbit, um, Bella and the Haunted Mansion, the extra DD Crow. You can fit in any extra deck cards, any hand trap cards you need, any hand traps that will be beneficial to you. Um, it's all in choice and the preference of the player. Like you can even add Ghost Reapers if you want to deal with the mirror match. You can easily deal with, um, you know, things in the extra deck. Like, you just put in anything randomly you have that would fit a monster in the extra deck, and Ghost Reaper can deal with it. So, that's pretty much leading me to the end of this deck profile. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell for notifications when you guys want to see... Uh, when I'm uploading new videos, live streaming, and stuff like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. HGJ signing out. Take care.